Health Minister Kweku Ajamain Menu criticizes Ghana Federation of Allied, Allied Health Professionals, describing their strike as having no basis. Also coming up, government unlikely to prosecute persons suspected to have masterminded the central medical stores fire. Also ahead this evening, Mental Health Authority bemoans lack of attention on mental health care. In business tonight, Kumasi edition of Media General Startup Fair and Funding Summit takes off tomorrow, May 17. Foreign Front International Crime Gang, which used malware to steal $100 million from more than 40,000 victims, dismantled. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got the details of these stories and much more news. You could watch us on Facebook. It's TV3 Ghana as well as on DSTV Channel 279. Let's get started with our very first story this evening. As the health minister, Kweku Ajamain Menu, says the strike by Ghana Federation of Allied Health Professionals has no basis. Taking his turn at the Meet the Press series in Accra, he revealed that the group has not exhausted available avenues to address their grievances. The federation began a sit-down strike on Tuesday over their exclusion from a proposed teaching hospital board. Here's reports by my colleague, Selom Amenya. Go and tell Parliament that this new thing that company has approved, they have left out our name. So can we put it here, Parliament? And the committee will sit down with you and engage. So write your proposal to them. That is how we do legislation in this country. Do you need to go on strike? When we are in the process of inviting people to come with their complaints in Parliament. So what is it that we are looking for? The group also argues that the governing board of the Allied Health Professionals Council has not been inaugurated 29 months after its dissolution, insisting that all other regulatory bodies in the sector have had their boards in place. But the sector minister rather blamed some individuals among the Allied Health Professionals. There is one particular person, either in the Federation as an executive or in one of the Allied Health Professions, who has been sitting on the board for more than two terms. The first list we sent, his name was there. There was a query that they wanted evidence that the association or whatever it is had actually selected him. We called him to change it. There was a tussle. It took some time before it went back. His name still remained. They queried again. We brought it back on engagement. It, doesn't, it looks like his name is still there. He's away. Yet it also sent a petition that this is day delaying his name is in that list, signed. The Federation is made up of about 18 groups within the health sector and insists government is ignoring their grievances, hence their action to push for fairness and equity in the health sector regulatory and management environment in Ghana. 98.5% of government funding to mental health is spent on staff emoluments. This was revealed in a report on tracking resources for community-based mental health services by Basic Needs Ghana, an NGO. The year-long research on tracking resources for community-based mental health services by Basic Needs Ghana was conducted from January to December last year. As part of the research, Basic Needs developed a checklist with health stakeholders with support from Star Ghana in 30 districts of five regions in the country. Key findings in the report indicates 97% of funding gap for community-based mental health service. Capacity building stood at 78% and logistics at 96%. We also found out that... Uh, the local assemblies are not doing uh, what is needed in order to provide the, these resources for their people or for their mental health uh, service providers to properly uh, implement services within specific districts. We must understand that that's why traffic keeps building up in the three psychiatric hospitals. Internally generated funds, IGF, was the main mode of financing non-renumerative expenditure. 
The purpose of the resource tracking exercise was to understand resourcing of community-based mental health care in Ghana. CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesiose, bemoaned the delay in the release of budgetary allocations to the authority and the three psychiatric hospitals. We have had only releases for the first quarter. If you look at the three psychiatric hospitals, each one of them should get about six million. The government says, no, we can't give you six million, but we can give you 1.2 million. That's per hospital. Now, the 1.2 million will be coming in three, four quarters, so every quarter will be 300,000. So it's a 300,000 that has been given to the three psychiatric hospitals each. The authority itself has had um, 60,000, which is our allocation, quarterly allocation for the year. The executive director of Basic Needs Ghana, Peter Yaro, noted mental health remains underserved, adding access to quality community-based mental health, especially in relation to children and women, must be prioritized. The program director and acting CEO of Star Ghana Foundation, Amidu Tanko, expressed disappointment over lack of interest in mental health issues, which has contributed to its funding challenges. Well, let's stay on this issue as until the passage of the legislative instrument, the LI, which will support the enforcement of the Mental Health Act, the Mental Health Authority will continue to reel under financial challenges. In an interview with TV3, CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesi Osei, says the LI is currently with the Attorney General. Here's Wendy Lai's report. CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Kwesiose, noted the ally is yet to be laid in Parliament. I just received a letter from the Attorney General that um, if, they are if we are happy with the form in which it is now, then we give them the go-ahead, then they will send to Parliament. So unlike what I thought was gone, it's not exactly yet gone, but at least it means that it's on its way. Without its passage, the authority's financial challenges would soar. And we are hoping that if it goes to Parliament by June and then when they will be rising after the second sitting or the second session, then it would have been passed. Once that one is done, the next thing will be for the Minister responsible for finance to establish the levy for us. Until the levy is established, every time that we get money is just a token. Meanwhile, Dr. Akwesio says calling on corporate Ghana to support the payment of the toll-free line for the Mental Health Authority to help save lives. NC has given us that line, but it needs to be activated, and that means that we need to be able to pay for the cost of the free calls that come from um, patients. The telecos are not picking it. I'm hoping that maybe the co some corporate body organization, private organization, may come and say that we are going to support you for one year, 9,000 a, a month for one year, 108,000 cities, you'll be happy. Now, police in 2nd D have commenced investigations into a case involving a suspect who was tied to a car and dragged on the streets of Adiambra in the 2nd D Takwadi metropolis. The victim who sustained severe injuries is currently receiving medical attention. According to the victim, at about 7 a.m. on Wednesday, May 15, he was accosted by a chief fisherman in the 2nd Takradi metropolis, Nana Kofi Esun, also known as Panya, and some heavily built men after being accused of stealing wood. After being assaulted, he said he admitted the offense under duress, although he denied the claim. <laughs> Three men assaulted me with cement blocks. They wanted to kill me, so I admitted the offense. The men tied my legs and hands and tied me to the fisherman's car and dragged me on the road. Residents who spoke off camera say, not even pleased from bystanders could calm the bewildered chief fisherman who, according to them, was bent on punishing the suspect. Head of the accident and emergency unit of the Fia Quanta Regional Hospital, Dr. George Owusu said, Akwesi was brought to the hospital in a taxi, bleeding with varying injuries. We realized he had extensive abrasions on the back, on the right forearm, 
then abortion injury on the right forearm. Then he also had an abortion injury on the lateral aspect of the right thigh and extensive abrasions on the sole of the right foot. So, so far, we've given him medications. He's stable now. We've done the investigations and is responding to treatment. When contacted, the second D district police commander DSP Imanol Tete confirmed the incident and said investigations had commenced. Based upon the information given to us at the hospital, we follow up to the area of the incident and uh, we observe that there was blasting on the stretch of a road covering about one kilometer road. For now, we are at the preliminary level of investigation. A rather worrying situation there. We'll bring you more on it subsequently. But in some of the news this evening, academic activities at the Ampayo Kurofum DA school in the Ashanti region was disrupted after a fire raised the school's junior high block on Thursday. Here's reports by our Ashanti regional correspondent, Ibrahim Abubakar. More than 150 students have been displaced. Three classrooms, a storeroom and the headmistress office were raised by the inferno. Several items, including a laptop computer, printer, and textbooks were all destroyed. The Etrimakwa Ahuma District Director of Education, Victor de Graft Etchison, visited the school to ascertain the extent of damage. He said arrangements have been made to resume academic work. I'm here with my team, supervision and other officers from the Education Directorate, to ensure that the number of children displaced, we can find a place for them. Fortunately for us, there is uh, another sister school just some few meters away from the school. So quickly, what we are doing is to relocate the Form 1s and the Form 2s to that. They have an empty block there, so we can get them there as early as possible. And then the Form 3s will be kept in the old building. District Chief Executive for the area, Nana Ochreteria Inchi, gave the assurance the affected block would be renovated in two months. The engineer will come here about an hour's time to see what we can do. And we are going to have a renovation of the whole building and bring them back. So maybe by a month's time or two, you bring them back here. Investigation has commenced to establish the cause of the fire. If you just join us, you're watching News 360 Live here from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kanda. Accra, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Do well to visit our social media feed. It's TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, more than 500 houses and 400 economic trees have been destroyed following a rainstorm on Tuesday at Kugrago in the Timpani district of the Upper East region. Affected communities have appealed to government agencies and benevolent organizations to come to their aid. Here's a report by my colleague, Tanko Mohamed Ibrahim. The rainstorm, which started at about 5.30 p.m., destroyed properties running into millions of cities and displaced many residents. The district chief executive of the area visited affected communities to access the extent of damage. He assured residents of soliciting support to assist victims with relief items. We are appealing to philanthropists to come to our aid with roofing sheets, with wood, with cement, whatever we can get, so that on our own as a district, we'll be able to do something. The DC further advised residents to seek technical assistance from experts before roofing their buildings, since some of the roofing were not properly done. About 400 economic trees, which serves as windbreakers in the community, were also uprooted. One of the victims, Mark Ayubago, and his family are seeking refuge in a neighbor's house. Asana Isa is also a victim. Affected school children have been loitering, awaiting the re-roofing of their classroom blocks. Now, Ghana risks an international blacklist if it fails to develop a beneficial ownership electronic register within the next six months. The Registrar General, Jemima Owari, who made this known, said the register, when made operational, would reveal real owners of companies. Here's reports by Daniel Opoku. Ghana in 2016 signed on to an international treaty to develop a beneficial ownership electronic register a database of real owners of companies. But it failed to develop it since Parliament passed the new companies called this year. The Registrar General is currently under obligation to develop the register within six months. Moreover, 
Destructive Industries Transparency International, EITI, is also mounting pressure on the Registrar General to deliver. The Registrar General, Jemai Moware, is soliciting views from agencies to avert a possible blacklist. With the, and Nogana has signed on to have a beneficial ownership register. We have right, right now we have been grade, we're on the grade list. And if we don't have this register in place by the end of this year, we could be blacklisted. She is confident the process will be completed within the time frame. We inform the public and give them a cutoff point. When we come into my office, you should have that data. Because the company has to collect it first before they supply it to me. It's their duty to give me that data. I would not know who is a beneficiary of, of a company until they inform me. So for now, we want to make sure that we are ready, and this should take about six months, to develop and upgrade our software to collect that data when we give you the time to bring it to us. The co-chair of the Extractive Industries Transparency International, EITI, Dr. Steve Mantiao, is hopeful the new electronic platform will reduce corruption. Dubious transactions that were going on within the context of the project execution. Um, I took the liberty to investigate this and was able to establish that the director of Sinopec in Ghana executing the project bore the same name as the owner of another company in Dubai which was supplying equipment and, and, and logistics to the Ghana project. What this meant was that the two companies were trading between themselves, even though they were related. And the disclosure or the information I found in terms of the ownership of the company enabled me to understand that there were transfer, tra transfer pricing issues involved in that transaction. This I brought to the attention of the GRA. When they investigated, they were able to retrieve as much as 15 million Ghana cities in unpaid taxes. Now, government is una unable, unlikely, I beg your pardon, to prosecute persons suspected to have masterminded the banning of the central medical stores. The health minister, Kwekwajiman Menu, who gave the hint at the Meets the Press series, noted that adding th that uh, important evidence were destroyed three days after the fire. Now, another report by Selom Amenya. in Tema was raised by fire on January 13, 2015, resulting in the destruction of medical supplies and equipment. A report from an investigation carried out subsequently pointed out that it was arson. A former laborer, Samuel Dubey, was named as having been involved in the act. Twelve officials of the Ghana Health Service, suspected to have played various roles, were interdicted However, not much progress has been made to bring the perpetrators to book. Answering questions as to what has delayed the prosecution of the suspects, the sector minister pointed out that critical evidence at the crime scene was destroyed, negating the conduct of a forensic audit recommended by the report. The Auditor General picked the documents with the support from some of our donor partners because they were interested, especially DFID commissioned a forensic audit to be done. Unfortunately, evidence has been destroyed. Because three days after the fire outbreak, under the guise that they were going to redevelop the Central medical stores, a contractor who was doing some work somewhere was mobilized to the site that they were going to rebuild. And after he clearing the entire place of all evidence that could have been gathered for forensic work, work stopped the basis that there was no funds available for that project. He however added that the relevant state institutions are working assiduously to gather enough evidence to prosecute. So we have referred this matter first to Yoko, to Attorney General's office. The forensic auditor has submitted his report to the Auditor General. He also has submitted to the, um, how do I call it, Attorney General's office. And the three of us, plus Yoko, the Ministry, uh, Auditor General, Attorney General's office, we are still looking at the forensic report to see if we can have some merit with some evidence that we have on our hands to see if we can do prosecution of some people. That is where we stand on that matter. Meanwhile, the sector minister also disclosed that one of Ghana's medical donors, the Global Fund, 
has pardoned the country after it was discovered that health commodities worth $27 million belonging to them were affected. Per the agreement, Ghana had to refund the amount, but the minister indicated that donors knowing Ghana lacks the financial muscle to pay back the money had decided to let it go. This means Ghana will no longer have to bear the consequences, but will have to adapt some major reforms to forestall such occurrences in the future. Ghana's stock of medical supplies that was lost in the fire was estimated at 237 million cities. All right, so that was Salom Amenya's report. Joining us in studio to speak to the matter is a former health minister, uh, Alex Sebefia, who worked under the tenure um, of... Uh, um, John Mahama, when the disaster occurred, thank you very much sir, for your time and good to have you in studio. So, what did investigations at the time establish? Well, the investigations uh, clearly were done by the security agencies and the uh, security agencies uh, came up with a report uh, mentioning a number of names who uh, were felt to be complicit directly or indirectly in what had occurred in terms of motive and actions. Um, the main witness who is believed or s main suspect who is believed to have been responsible for the fire um, was at large at the time and is, and is still at large as I understand it. Um, the report was sent to the Attorney General. Attorney General looked at it and felt that there wasn't sufficient at the time. It was sent back to the security agencies and then subsequently we lost uh, power. The new uh, government of, of President Akufuado came into being and uh, a lot of uh, uh, political mischief was played prior to the election on this matter. Um, about two years down the line, we are more or less in the same place. Is it a and surprise to you that no one has been able to uh, be prosecuted as a result of the investigations that were conducted under your tenure? I'm disappointed and I'm a bit uh, uh, concerned, but uh, being a lawyer myself, I can understand the difficulty sometimes with these types of prosecutions. Even though I'm not totally convinced by some of the uh, um, ex uh, explanations put forward. Uh, the Central Medical Store site was not tampered with by any government official or any, uh, or should I say, any uh, political person mm. uh, for quite a while. It mm. was, if anything at all, the people who went in there in the initial stages were all uh, under the security and mm -hmm. also the fire service. They got involved in the site and they are the ones who uh, gathered evidence. It was close to a year, over a year before, we sought permission in writing from the national, the national security as to whether we could now allow a contractor on site because by we had already promised the people of Ghana that we would try and restore the central medical stores uh, back to uh, its former glory within a year. And we had it got into the year or surpassed it, and we hadn't even, even been able to get to site. Mm. So we sought their permission, and the permission was granted. Mm. So in terms of forensic evidence being destroyed, it had nothing to do with the government of the day. The security agencies at the time gave us permission to go into So, so you reckon that it was going to be difficult to prosecute this matter? Mm. It was difficult, but having mm. said that, mm. I think some of the explanation given are red herrings. The problem we I envisaged at the time was that Dogbe, who is the main suspect, was at large. Was at large. Mm. And his evidence or what he would say was going to be crucial to a lot of things. Mm. Without him, there was always going to be difficulties. Mm. And we were hoping that Interpol would have been contacted and uh, 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 a tag put on his name um, so that he could be uh, p uh, arrested if he was out of town or more efforts would be made to locate him. But you had instigated that process under your regime when this we happened? Ha as far as I understand mm. it, we had informed the security agencies to do so. Mm. All right, quickly. Uh, as to whether it had been done or not. Right, quickly before we wrap up. So there's an article which seeks to suggest that you sanctioned the discussion that made the country cough out some uh, $12.6 million for a service that Ghana could have gotten for free from the Americans. And if you indulge me, I'm talking about the zipline drone issue. How do you react to these allegations? I think that the story is gone, is, is wrong. Mm. Uh, I was the one who uh, instigated conversations with a group that were going to give us the drones for free. Okay. And when the new government came into place, they right. uh, put out a contract with for 12.6 million. And you had difficulties with and that? I had difficulties with them doing that. Mm. And the contract or the arrangements we had uh, under my tenure was for uh, some medical centers for uh, to be built in 
at least 10 different areas, uh, helicopters to come in, um, as well as drones um, and some ambulances for each of the sectors. Mm -hmm. um, I believe one or two per the medical centers that were going to be put in place. Mm -hmm. And all this was going to be done for free as part of a package from the uh, one of the uh, uh, armed, uh, should I say armed or should I say, the security forces from the United States. Mm -hmm. For we got very far in the negotiations, but because there were drones, we decided that we need a clearance from national security because one of the primary purposes of drones is also for, for surveillance and other military aspects. Mm. And therefore, to allow drones to come into the country, we decided we would send the agreement to the national security to look at it mm. for them to be satisfied that we could actually go into this negotiation. Uh, nothing to do with the financing land because there was no money involved mm. and we were just going to uh, acquire. But we wanted to be sure that we didn't fall foul. Mm. And so we sent it off to national security and before uh, we could get a f an answer from them, we again lost power. You had lost power. So exactly. So, so for you, there's absolutely no justification for this absolutely current none for uh, this deal that's just uh, been entered into. At the price at which it is put mm. forward. And you, you find it ridiculous. W exactly. Mm. Thank you very much, Alex. So if you uh, is a former health minister, uh, you know, under the s well, John Mahama administration, thank you very much sir, for your time. And good to have you uh, to help us to understand some few matters. You're still watching uh, News 360 Live here from our news hub here at Adesau in Kandakra. On our MTN video report tonight, our citizen journalist Divine Atipo calls on government to complete a chips compound at Mafi Ahomenakpofe in the central Tong district. Mafia Fangakofo is located in the central Tongu district of the Volta region. And this is a chief commerce started by the previous government, which is the NDC government. And the project has come to a standstill since the MPP has come to power. Since the nearest health center from the village is about five kilometers away, and we are pleading to the government and any other non-governmental organizations to come to the aid of the citizens in Mafi Afonakopo. Citizens journalist Divine Atipu Afo. Oh, and just like Divine, you can, Divine, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-1433044. That's 055-1433044. Absolutely. Stay with us here on News 360. Welcome back to News 360. Let's get to the business segment this evening as over 70 exhibitors have registered to participate in the second edition of Media General's Startup Fair in Kumasi. The fair offers a platform for young entrepreneurs and other businesses to network, sell and access opportunities to enhance their operations. Ahead of the fair's opening on Friday, some exhibitors are already excited to be on board. Here's reports by Benjamin Adu. General's Startup Fair was launched in 2018 in Accra. The fair offers entrepreneurs and other businesses the platform to access new clients and expose their products and services to the public. Exhibitors will be selling at discounted rates and give freebies to attract patrons. Other attractions include free health screening and makeup for patrons. Some registered entrepreneurs are optimistic of a successful event. Every woman who takes an, uh, an egg a day six times in a week prevents herself from getting breast cancer. The protein levels in, in an egg helps you a lot, of course, to function very well. Conditions like um, conjunctivitis, you have glaucoma, which is a very big challenge for, for us in Ghana. So you can have an eye check at least once a year, or once every two years, if your risk is low. But for those who have parents having glaucoma, they have to do it more regularly. Friends Eye Center will be organizing free eye screenings during the three-day fair holding at the Kumasi City Mall from this Friday to Sunday. And certainly lots of opportunities there at the fair. Be sure to pass by at the Kumasi Mall between the 17th and 19th of May. Now, MTN Ghana takes its annual Eye Fest to Medina in Accra. This month-long festival is in its ninth year and is to create awareness about the internet and its immense benefits. Through Eye Fest, MTN Ghana has created the opportunity for countless education opportunities across all touch points to share valuable insights on the benefits of the internet. 
In addition to data education and awareness, the telecommunications company has introduced platforms such as MTN Play and MTN Shorts where subscribers can visit to upload and download video content. At Medina, innovative applications ranging from tracking devices to construction monitoring applications were showcased. I first started in 2011. In 2011, we have only just about 1.5 million people who are connected to the internet. But today, as we speak, over the years that we have run iFest to educate customers of the relevance of the usage of the internet, we are about 13.5 million uh, internet users on MTN uh, network now. So we use the uh, IFS month to educate customers on the relevance and the benefits of the usage of the internet and the tools that can make their life a lot more brighter. It also provided the platform for the team to interact and introduce to customers affordable MTN partnered mobile handsets. Over the years we've noticed um, a, a gap between the formal and the informal. And so we have focused um, alongside the years on the informal sector as well to bridge the gap between those who are underserved um, and then those who have uh, knowledge in the internet space. So activity here is to encourage them and to give them the benefits and the reason to use the internet or to use devices that can get them onto an internet which can enhance their life and the activities that they, inter they uh, undertake. This year's IFS is in consonance with the year of the customer declaration which seeks to reward subscribers while offering great value for money. And that's all the business news you've got for you this evening on News 360. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks very much for watching News 360. Uh, for more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. My name is Park Yassari, Black and Proud. I'm Natalie Force. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Black and Proud.